Hello and welcome today again with broadcast with Mayan Jambudins International. I'm glad to welcome you again, Mayan. Thank you very much. And today we have a special guest, Judith Bayer, and you are living in the United Kingdom as well. My good friend who is next to me sitting here. Hello, Bo, how are you? Thank you very good. How are you? Thank you, I'm fine. So, Mayan, go ahead. We have now about 45 minutes to talk to you about the spirit world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to you, Anita, and to Bo. And once again, we are here, and it's lovely to actually see Jude Bauer, who I have to say, welcome to this site. And uh, Jude, she lives in something called Eastbourne, which is in, is in the south of England by the coast. And uh, Jude is a minister in Denmark for her church, which are the Corinthian, I think you said it was? No, I'm not the Corinthian anymore. I, um, uh, and the church is in, in England, in England, in, in England. I am ordained from Corinthian church, but I don't belong to Corinthian church anymore. Okay, but are you still a minister over here? I am still a minister, yeah. And uh, my church now is in Bexhill. The Hills. Yeah. Yes, well, this church, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. It's just as you and I know, because we are both mediums in England, and sometimes it's hard to, to explain to people that we have a great lot of spiritualist churches uh, where yeah. some of them belongs to the National Spiritualist Union, some yeah. belong to the greater world, which are the Christian part of spiritualism. Yeah. Then we have the Corinthian, in which you have been part of once upon a time. And then we also have the independent spiritualist churches. Yeah. So yeah. they are all places where people go to, to watch a demonstration of uh, clairvoyantly mediumship or healing or whatever we do in our churches. And I know that you have been part of that for many years, but being Danish, it's lovely. Yes, I have. Because I share that with you being both Danish. But yeah. you do, tell me a little bit about yeah. Yeah. your background in Denmark and how you got into spirit communication yeah. from and where you came from in Denmark. Yeah. See, uh, I came there from, I'm going up in Espia in, in, uh, in Denmark. And uh, I, my background is I have actually been without knowing spiritually since I was a child. Uh, see, when I said my granddad on my father's side were married to my grandmother's sister. And uh, my grandparents and my parents were not spiritualism. They were far away from that. But on the other side, my whole uh, father's family was spiritualist. And uh, my great-grandma was medium, and two of my father's auntie were medium. The, when I was a child, and actually I have a, a tough childhood because I could not, I was scared about what I see. I could not talk to anybody about it. I could see things, I could feel things with people, I could, I could see things people, other people could not see. And it, it scared me. And I can remember my, my, my parents say, if you don't stop, you will end up in a sanatorium because that is, so I, it, 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 it was not easy for me. But then I grow into and I know that it's absolutely, it's not true what I saw. Mm -hmm. And uh, see, when I see the spirits, I see it so clear as I see you. Uh, and uh, I come begin to go to uh, really, really in, interested to read about uh, the spiritualism, read about uh, um, a mediumship and, and whatever, without knowing that I should be a medium of that time being. Then I uh, moved from uh, SPS to, to, 
for a little tiny uh, village that had chair board. I lived in a lovely house uh, on the countryside, and there was so much space so I could uh, uh, have a circle. And I could, uh, at that time being, I, I uh, developed myself in, in from Frank Stauson from calling into be a healer. And uh, I began to teach on, on the AUF in Denmark in evening class in, 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 uh, in, in circles and, 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 and meditation and things like that. And then took more and more and more uh, up to I, well, that's absolutely me. So uh, I moved from, from chair board to, to coding. And that's my good move because uh, I uh, began to meet up with other people that were really interested in, in, in spiritualism or uh, mediumship, clairvoyance, uh, healing. And I was so lucky that um, I uh, was founder and, and chairman for Holistic uh, uh, Association. And uh, I come in contact with a lot of people there. Uh, and I have the, in uh, Elgel, a wonderful uh, place that was a heal, uh, center for healing and therapy where there come a lot of people for greetings and healings and, and students that would like to, to, to learn. And I was really, really busy and I absolutely loved it. And um, that's what, what, what is really, really, that's just, we go 26 years right now and and that's what 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 i really really like and um then i um there were, uh, uh, you know uh, that uh, uh, tv uh, uh theory on on this map uh yeah thomas breinholt uh, called me mm -hmm. and said that uh, he was interested to come to Colding and make a, a, a evening about uh, the serial, the, the power about power of, about the spirit. I don't know what to say that in English. Yeah, power okay. of the spirit, yeah. yeah. And uh, Michael Rick, My, Michael Rick come over and we have a talk and uh, I set up for them so they could come over and um, that was fantastic. They had actually an English medium with them uh, Billy Cook. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, that's and. Did you know? Uh, who, more and more come. It, you did. Sorry? You did. Yeah. Did you know who started on an Smart? Did you know who actually did their first programs and who started? Was that you? That was me. Yes, that was me. I started yeah. on Smart. But didn't no, that's you. Yeah. Yes, that was it. Yeah, it's a fantastic series. Yeah, she could never, never, ever have carried out on an asmart in the way that it should have done if it hasn't been for me, because I brought in mediumship. She didn't know anything about mediumship at all. Yeah, and when yeah. I brought in to them communication through what we call psychometry uh, to a young girl, yeah. Reke, whose brother had passed yeah. over. Uh, yeah. and have them names and everything else like that Denmark was flawed yeah. and that was the first time ever that really honest mark, mark got really registered in Denmark and after that one yeah. we then uh, did another program called uh, Spirits Return on the Nevinity Bay I did that one too yeah. so there was quite a lot of him and often with uh, Breinhold Thomas Beinhold, we will sit and have discussions about how many mediums there were in Denmark. And I was trying to lead them into people I knew and send them to do some investigation. Because as yeah. I said to, to Thomas Beinhold, I cannot be the only medium we have. So I introduced them to Lutzer's Hoos, which they did some filming in Lutzer's yeah. Hoos, which is the only spiritualist church at the time we had in Denmark. Yeah. But at that time, uh, you know that Pernerbro in Copenhagen, we also had a spiritualist church. Uh, the yeah. guy was called to run that one, Annette. Annette, oh, she's sitting still. What was the guy? What What was the medium who ran the uh, spiritualist church in Copenhagen? Pernerbro. Um, uh, it was a gentleman. Yeah, uh, Daniel Kieren. I forgot his name. Oh, yeah, Daniel Kieren. Yeah, 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 ye
uh, I, I'm on Google. Yeah. Yeah. So I did some Pokemon. Yeah. So I did some uh, some things with him too. Um, yeah. But at the time uh, when we did in specifically one um, with them in uh, they were near for Stroud. They were down for Stroud. This is a walking street in Copenhagen. There was a very old discotheque there. And that was very much haunted at the time. So we went in together with Frank Munger and me and went in and did the filming in there. But I was very nervous at that time because of Frank Mungu. Uh, I realized that he was quite seriously ill, but he didn't realize that he himself. was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he didn't realize that himself. And I sort of asked the program to be extremely careful because I could feel his throat and things like that. And of course, that's what he passed over cancer of the yeah. throat. Yes. Yeah. So the actual story about on and this mark goes very far back, but I am absolutely extremely happy that he also went to interview you, uh, because that I turned around and said to them, and this was one thing: why do you have to use British mediums if you've got mediums that are Danish? And that's when he started to go in and research more mediums in Denmark and went away from Billy Cooks. And who, there was also uh, another medium that he used a couple of times, uh, Bishop, Graham Bishop. He was also used. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. He was in prison, as you know. Uh, so oh, they, yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. yeah so they yeah. started to see, do you understand, that the sort yeah. of things that I was saying, we have yeah. got our own mediums in the Nordic countries. Why do we have to yeah. search out and not use what we have got ourselves? And that is why yeah. I know that you are one of them. Though we too live in England, we are still home in Denmark. We are still very proud of being Danish. We are still Danish yeah. mediums. Uh, we still work on that. So that's why I know about yeah. Anna's marked with his, uh, the strength yeah. of spirit. Yeah. So that's yeah. lovely, really lovely to know. Well, how did you then get to England, Jutta? Yeah, I come to England because my son had lived in England since 1997. And I missed him so much. So I have only one thing and I was to move over here. And uh, I did. And I have to say, it's uh, the first couple of years, it was, it was not so easy because I come from um, a, a big salary in, 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 in Denmark also to earn the half of what I earn, own, uh, normally earn. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, uh, I missed my circles, I missed all my, my uh, spiritual thing. And I was a little bit naive because I thought in my mind, I can just go over and then I am there. But no, 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 no. It took a long, long time before I uh, was recognized. Yeah. And but, I, think, um, I think that is something we in Denmark don't understand because you and I know you can go on a course and in at that weekend you're qualified to become a medium after a week oh, yeah, in Denmark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting knowing that all those years that we have to train in England, yes. even though yes. on the platform, we have to know the rules and regulations. Yes. We have to do, it must be the same with you, as you said yourself. You didn't realize how hard it was. Mm -hmm. And it is hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More than I with the sharp bite. But there is so many very unprofessional mediums and yeah. they make it difficult for people that work yeah. serious. Yeah. And that is a shame. And there's one thing more. I always learn my, 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 my students what is spiritualism, what is the history of, uh, behind spiritualism. When you ask people that have been mediums, they don't know a clue what spiritualism actually is. And that makes me a little bit angry. And we have to actually look back and we have to say to ourselves, who lives in England and who works in the churches? Whose fault is that? Yeah. A, it is the spiritualist churches themselves because the presidents, which are four men, which are called in Denmark, it's the president. Many of the presidents who takes the churches on have no knowledge of the philosophy of spiritualism. 
You cannot yeah. give something you don't know. And the people nope. who works in the churches, if that is the committee or whatever it is, do know spiritualism, not neither. So you're actually nope. in a situation where you have both got the greater world, you have got the SNU, you've got the Corinthian, you've got the independent. A lot of people who actually run their churches for them has no knowledge of the yeah. history. Yeah. So how can you yeah. pass that on to the congregation? Because no. you and I know the only reason for why the people go in spiritualist churches in England, it is because you want the fortune told. Exactly. Bing. <laughs> you don't yeah. have to go to Brighton Pier and get a fortune teller looking in your hands. You just go to a spiritualist church. Yeah. You have a medium standing up there saying, I got a grandfather with you here, and he's telling me that you want to move house. And yes, you don't like to where you're living, and I feel there's something wrong with your back, or you've been in hospital recently. Yeah. I mean, we are laughed at when it comes to Skeptica, because this is an everyday running. Yeah. But for me, yeah. who saw spiritualism at its best in Great Britain, sitting with Leslie Flint, no yeah. Leslie Flint, an independent voice medium, worked with Doris Stoke, Doris Collins. Yeah. I worked yeah. with all of them because that's how long yeah. I have been. But Dee could actually yeah. deliver a message. Dee can't do that today. No. Not even no. in England can Dee really no. deliver a good message. And I think yeah. that you, you see that yeah. too from where you And, and, and from. that is... That is Absolutely, absolutely. And when we see all the big, in my point of view, mediums that are going through the spirit world, how much we could learn from them, actually. Absolutely. And I think that that is one, in a sense of it, we are very lucky that in, in Denmark, I'm trying to bring back the old mediums we had in Denmark and give the history uh, about spiritualism. Because you know, you did, we had fantastic mediums in Denmark that was... Yeah really known did you know that yeah 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 i know that i we know that we, and uh, we some of our medium was tested both in copenhagen england and in paris yeah you know yeah. Was, he sat for science and was scientifically researched most of them unfortunately were physical mediums they were into the physical mediumship because that was the only thing that he could really test was that yeah then you have also got, unfortunately, a lot of skeptical people who will come in and like anywhere else in the world, you will tear them down. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and uh, there are always, uh, when you're out on platform and there's a lot of people, there's always some, there will still you some question, what the, what, the, what the hope that you cannot answer. Oh, yes. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I would always say, it's up, not up to me to convince you. I don't care if you believe it or not. It's not up to you. And I shall not justify it myself because I am a spiritualist. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and uh, so, I, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it is very... So, but I love my work. I love my work as, as, as a spiritualist, as a healer. Yeah. I love healing. Healing is, is, is uh, uh, my, 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 uh, Passion. my heart. And I... I'm so lucky that my healer guide uh, from the spirit world is uh, Bruno Gröning. Have you ever heard about Bruno Gröning? No. Yeah. I and he's very much with he's very much with me when I when I, I do my my healing. And I always I'm never alone. I always speak to to, to my guides if I do the, when when I when I do my healing. And it's so funny because. The, the client or person, we will call it, that, that, that gets the heel, get, oh, it's not fantastic. I know your hands were there, but there were definitely other hands on me as well because I could feel that. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm very grateful that, that, that uh, he, he, he is my guide when, when, when I... I, I uh, he was uh, in prison many times because of his... Uh, he cured people and 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 and. Uh, Can you yeah. tell me a little bit about who he is or who or who he was? Yeah, Bruno Gröning was uh, German. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and uh, he was very much uh, in the 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. He never ever took any money for his, 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 his healing. He just, people, as a thousand of people come and he actually got healed. Mm -hmm. And uh, people tried to, uh, to claim that he was fake. And mm -hmm. he was in prison. He was in prison a couple of times because but there was no fake about that. He just mm -hmm. couldn't heal people. And um, he, he died in 59. And uh, he was, they say he died uh, uh, from cancer. But when, when the mega autopsy, there was absolutely no cancer in his, in, in his body. He was just... Uh, but what can I say like this? Right. He would just go and, 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 and he had that gift and, and, and he used that. And mm -hmm. that's what used against him. Uh, yeah. You, you were, uh, yeah. And I think uh, that's a very sad thing. But here, we're one think, of the biggest healers we have, yeah? yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting because that when we start talking, as you know that about England, the biggest healer over here has always been Harry Edward. Uh, you know, people yeah. stream to the Harriet which now sanctuary, which I'm sorry in in England, yeah. but we seldom ever hear the healers we have got in the Nordic countries or yeah. in the Nordic part of, let's say, Germany. With it, there has also been extremely yeah. lovely healers yeah. in Norway. Yeah. Yeah. There's been really a fantastic healers in Norway uh, that really had the ability of of yeah. healing. Uh, I remember stories from yeah. my own childhood that um, my yeah. mother told me about. And there was one little story that was quite interesting. Uh, my mother was born yeah. in North Norway, so we were a little bit further off. But she remember as a child when people came, yeah. you know, you have children that was carried yeah. by the parents because you couldn't walk. You had people, obviously, that was dying of yeah. cancer. And you have to walk to this healer's place in North Nor uh, up in North Norway in Sanishu. Yeah. They all walked yeah. back upright children could run nothing was wrong with him yeah he was just a little old man sitting in a little old house yeah. who did the healing took no money for it at yeah. all but that he has never been talked about neither so we have many people around who has never charged i have been surprised and i have to say that and i'm not afraid of saying it again when i hear a healer in denmark a charging up to a thousand a thousand kroners for half an hour to an hour healing. Yeah, and that's just disgusting. Is, you know, I'm sitting, oh my God, in England, healing is free. We have always yes. had free healing. In